with regard to issues pertaining to sex education, then there is an age below the age of tamiz, which is the age of which is called the age of discernment or the age of understanding. Normally, Ahlul Ilm say that the age of discernment is between the ages of seven and nine. By the age of between seven and nine, the children begin to sense the differences between right and wrong, and in, uh, even in affairs of sexuality. So before that age, they actually have no sense of these types of things. So opening up this type of arena in front of this type of discussion in front of them, in reality, is of no real consequence or benefit for them. Beyond the age of discernment, then yes, there should be a certain amount of early discussion around gender. The brothers sit over here. The sisters sit over here. This is straight away an, an, uh, an introduction that you're giving to the children with regard to gender distinction. The women, they dress like this. The men, they dress like that. And so on. The aura of the woman is this. The aura of the man is that. After age of discernment, there's no harm in teaching the children this. Then when they get older and they enter, for example, come close to the age of puberty, then of course there are certain other things that we need to start introducing our children to. So the, for example, the girls need to be introduced to the ahkam surrounding the issue of haid, haid which is of course uh, menstrual bleeding of the woman, that before the age of her, uh, before her actually entering into adolescence, that she is informed by her mother. That the mother will sit her down and inform her or send her to a sister of learning where she will hear those things. Or come, even if those children, they come to a dars, for example, of our brother Abu Hakim, where he teaches here, Umdatul Ahkam, they will come to a stage where he'll be entering into those types of affairs. So everything by way of tadarruj or by way of everything at its stage. And by the age of 15, that the children should be fully informed of these types of affairs, that which is halal for them, that which is haram for them, even in terms of marriage and sexuality, that which is permissible and that which is impermissible. But the manner in which is taught, it is taught by way of the rules and learning and knowledge. So therefore, the, the, the etiquette of Islam in conveying this type of information, that the etiquette is not violated and morality is not violated. So every affair at its proper time, at an early age, as I said, separation, meaning that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, command them with the prayer at the age of seven. When you command a child with the prayer at the age of seven, the female and the male need to know how to dress. The female and male need to know where to stand in the salah. The man stands in the, in the foremost rows and the women stand behind them. And the woman, what she covers and what she doesn't cover. Purification. Also, that the children from an early age, they are taught the affairs of purification, how to purify. The woman, she is taught, or the girl, she is taught after the age of discernment, before the age of puberty, that she is taught the manners of purification from the affairs of menstruation. But by the time she is ready to get married, that the mother informs her of that which is permissible and that which is unpermissible. The father, he teaches his sons that which is permissible and impermissible with regard to one's wife. And when they attend the duros and the circles and the khutub, if they are delivered upon the path of sunnah and salafiyah, anyway the children will begin to pick up these affairs. Because the khatib and yawm al-jum'ah will mention the affairs that are forbidden, the affairs that are allowed. And in the duros they will learn the ahkam of tahara. They will go through the book of kitab al-nikah for example. In Umdatul Ahkam, and, in, and if, if a person is teaching Bulugh uh, Al-Maram of Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani. So in that, method, in that method, these things are taught. And one from, the, one from the most beautiful ways of teaching and opening up these affairs is that if you yourselves are attending those durus, and then you return back home, and then you can sit with your children and say, today we covered Babu, or, or, or the Bab of Tahara, Kitab Tahara, for example. Book of Purification, what did you learn? Because when you enter the book of purification, even in Balugh al-Maram, you reach a stage, Barakallahu feekum, where you enter, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Aisha radiallahu anha mentions, how she used to clean off the, the, the semen of the clothing of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now if your daughters have entered into puberty, or they are close to entering into puberty, and the men and the boys are close to entering into puberty, there is information they need to know. That what is the level of najasa of the semen? How does one purify himself from, 
for example, if he, if he was to have a dream, like the dream of the, of, the, of the man and the dream of the woman, that what necessitates the ghusl after that dream in which there is a release of semen or there is a, 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 a climax or an orgasm that takes place, that what is the level of purification? How does one purify themselves? So each one at its age. This is how the Muslim gives tarbiyah. What about the schools? What is the duty of the schools with regard to this affair? Then in reality... That if this is taught by a mudarris who has studied and he knows the ahkam of the deen, then he will teach that at the right stage to the children at the right age by way of that which is munasib to that child at that particular age. And this is the da'wah and this is the method of teaching of the likes of Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz and those scholars. So you don't sit for example a five-year-old child down and start teaching the ahkam of hayd and nifas and istihada. These types of affairs, they are not ready for that age. It does not make any sense to them. The, nat- you know, the natural blood of women is not to be taught at that age. Rather at a later stage. Your, the mother, for example, will, they'll, they'll, they'll come every, in every month for most women. That they will come in the stage of her, of her month where she's not praying. So the daughters and the children will ask, Why isn't mommy praying? Why isn't ummi praying? Why isn't ummi praying? So now a general answer can be given. That my son... For every woman, there is a time in the month that Allah has not allowed her to pray. And your mother, there will be in every month, four, five, six, seven days, where she will not be praying. You don't need to go any further than that at the age of four and five. At the age of nine and ten and eleven, now that child or that girl, she needs to know this information. Because now the daughter, she is told by the mother, my daughter, this will come upon you just like it comes upon the women of the children of Adam. This will happen to you. When this happens, then this is, uh, this is how you protect yourself from it, meaning from the blood, because that blood is impure. And likewise, that this is how, at the end of it, this is how you purify yourselves. And likewise, the mother, if she is not able to inform her child about the difference between the different type of discharge, then the mother, she makes that clear as the child becomes older or she opens up a book or something of that nature. And those issues are made clear. But each at the proper age. The mudarrisin and the mudarrisat in the in the in the, uh, the the male and female teachers in the various Islamic schools, Salafi schools up and down the country, they need to be acquainted with what has to be taught at a particular age. If there are some secular requirements that come from the from the direction of, for example, the education ministry or the Ministry of Education and so on, then those requirements that they have, a mudarris and the head teacher or the mudir of any any madrasa. He should be intelligent enough to realize how to cater that which they require in the cr- curriculum, how to cater that and make it and, and so that it can be taught in a manner that is Islamic without breaking the law, for example, without violating any laws of the land. And also, on top of that, that you educate it, so educate the children so, so far, so long as you do not go beyond that which is. Uh, at their level or which is munasib at the level of the child at that particular age Wallahu a'lam I hope that helps somewhat